What's up, everyone? Welcome to Fan Sports New York Varsity. I'm your host, Frank Langella, joined by my co-host, Marcelio Langella. And Mars, this is our Section 1A Week 1 preview show. And we are ready to go for the official regular season of Section 1. I know some teams played in Week 0, but football is uh, kicked off. And we're getting into some of the really important games of the regular season. But how's it going, brother? Yeah, man, it's uh, it's crazy that we are already here in week one, and I'm just excited to make some game picks because you already know your boy has a high percentage. He's just looking to beat it in last year's. Yeah, and, you know, just a reminder that I came in first place uh, last season. But besides that, I want to welcome our audience. We appreciate you guys for joining the show. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about um, the week one games of Section 1A. We're going to go take a dive into some of the top matchups and pick all the games at the end. But before we get started, I just wanted to kind of uh, remind everybody that, hey, if you like this content, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to help boost it. You can also get access to our content on our website at fansportsny.com, um, where you can also come in contact with us if you would like. And also, if you would like to donate to our cause, obviously, we do not do subscription-based services. Um, we are all donation-based, and we appreciate any donation from our fans, and you can get access to our Patreon um, in the subscription, in the description below and on our website. Um, but Mars, let's kind of dive into this. Uh, let's talk about the games on slate and then we'll talk about some of the top matchups. We'll do five top matchups, but the games this weekend, um, John Jay cross river, Owen one at Somers, which is zero and zero. That is a lead game on Friday night. Lakeland one to know at Nyack, um, which is a lead game on Friday night. Harrison one to know at Clarkstown South, which is a lead game on Friday night. Clarkstown North at Pelham, a league game. Fox Lane at Yorktown is a league game on Friday night. Um, Rye at Brewster, which is a league game on Friday night. Maypack at Eastchester is also a league game, but that is on Saturday. And Morristown uh, Beard, which is New Jersey school, they're one and oh, is at Sleepy Hollow, um, who is one and oh, that is a non league game. Um, so those are the games on Slate Mars. Let's talk about some of the top matches I mentioned we're going to do five of them and then we'll pick all the games at the end the first game i want to talk about fox lane at yorktown fox lane 0 and one at yorktown who is one and oh last week fox lane lost to byram hills in a non-league game yorktown won in a non-league game versus their rival john jay cross river in a thriller in overtime um, when you look historically yorktown is four and oh versus fox lane the last time they played was in 2019 where they won 42 to nothing um, but let's start with fox lane. i mean there's a grit to Fox Lane that I really like. I think they're a gritty football team. Um, they are a tough out every time, you know, these last two years that teams have been playing. And, and when I look at offensively, I do think Yorktown, um, I, I think that Yorktown ran into some issues defending the pass last week. And, you know, they definitely had to go up against a lot of weapons. And my question is, can Fox Lane kind of get some opportunities in play action? We know they like to run the football. Um, it's definitely a priority to them, but they're going to have to make some plays in the passing game. Um, so it obviously starts with establishing the run with guys like Myers and Minotti. Um, and, and this offensive line really going to have to step up as like Bailey's got uh, Bailey, Guider, Mejia. Can they create some lanes and get ahead of the chains that the play action can open up for them? Because I do think some opportunity will be there that they can take advantage of, especially I do think Yorktown, a very aggressive style defense. They want to come after you. They'll play some man coverage. It'll leave some open opportunities to throw the football. Um, defensively, this is a gritty defense. Uh, they were gritty last week. Um, the, obviously, the focus is going to be bottling up uh, Mirellis, especially when he moves around, right? He's not going to just be at the quarterback spot. you got to be aware of where he is on the field. It's going to be huge. And I think they're going to have to be sending some stunts, some pressures, um, especially when their young quarterback at Yorktown comes in. You know, they want to try to create um, some disguises for them and, and kind of disrupt the flow of the offense. And when quarterback Myrellis is in at the quarterback spot, Mars, they got to keep him in the pocket. He is very dangerous when he breaks contain. They do quarterback design runs with him. Got to keep him in the pocket, Mars. What are your thoughts on Fox Lane? Yeah, when it comes to Fox Lane, I think overall as a team, they're just a gritty group of guys. And I think that, like, I think you kind of mentioned it exactly right. Uh, Yorktown had some difficulty against the pass, so it's essential that Fox Lane open that up with some run plays, and then hopefully you can get some play action pass to really cause some so, cause some issues for this Yorktown secondary. Um, but obviously, from the defensive point of view, slow down these athletes. I think Yorktown has a lot of guys, especially Morales, that can really step it up. 
So if you slow them down or keep them in the pocket, then I think they'll be pretty good. Yeah. Um, let's go to Yorktown, Mars. They uh, three and two at home last year. Offensively, again, what a game that Myrellis had at the quarterback spot. But they, again, they move him around. He's not just there at the quarterback spot. 220 yards rushing in a touchdown. He also caught a touchdown at 75 yards passing in a touchdown. Also had an INT. Really a you know well-rounded football game uh, for him. And I think this is where he's at his best is when he can dictate the game in multiple ways, um, especially on the offensive side of the ball. And I do, again, 300-plus yards is pretty tremendous. And when they move him around, they bring in their young quarterback, Kaden Gonzalez, who had two touchdowns, excuse me, uh, he had three touchdowns, including a game-tying and go-ahead touchdown in overtime. He was 11-20 for 100 yards. Um, and I tell you what, he, he was pretty composed for a young guy. I mean, there was obviously mistakes made, but... He made some big throws and big moments, and, and they want to try to spread the ball to others like Constantine, Costello had two touchdowns, Price. Um, you know, Yorktown showed, you know, they have some young guys on this team, a mix of veteran and young guys. And I thought, you know, I was a bit impressed by that. I was a bit impressed. And uh, it, it all starts with my relish, but this young quarterback came in and also made some big plays. Um, defensively, Mars, again, this is a very aggressive style of defense, but they did give up some big chunk plays last week, especially in the passing game, like I mentioned. They definitely have to be better at that. They can't give up these big-time pass plays, um, which are really back-breaking uh, to a defense. Now, Fox Lane is not really um, known for for high-powered pass plays. Right, They're more focused on the run, but it's definitely got to be an emphasis um, that they got to do a better job last week, and they are going to get a big dose of the, run, of the run game this time around. And, you know, I'm looking at some of their, their defensive players who had strong weeks last week. Starts with their linebacker, Christian uh, Desanio. He had eight tackles last week, including that big fourth down stop in overtime to win the game. Did a great job of reading. I um, mean, this is a guy who moved from edge to inside linebacker. Um, and he's going to be such an important player. He's not a very big guy, but an instinctive guy. Has a nose for the football. Um, but Ferone, he had nine tackles. Weissman had seven tackles. And this kid, Constantine, is a really a strong two-way player. Coach talked about him, and I talked about him on the preview show. Um, this is a guy who... Uh, he's a playmaker, and, and I like what I saw on both sides of the ball from him. He's going to be really important to watch. Mars, what are your thoughts on Yorktown? Yeah, my, I think it, when you look at Yorktown, the offense is really revolving around Myrellis, right? I think the fact that you see the, you know, he is all over the field, and even when he's going to be more of a an athlete on the outside, you're going to get Gonzalez that's going to play very effective. I think you may want to mention the fact that they have a lot of young guys that have stepped up, as well as veterans that are, are playing leadership roles in this team. The offense has been very efficient, and I'm really interested to see what happens against this gritty Fox Lane defense. Um, when it comes to the, the defense of your town, obviously the secondary needs to play it up. They need to really step it up. I mean, the fact that you know they were giving up some big chunk plays last week in Week Zero is going is is cause of concern. But like you mentioned, Fox Lane is not necessarily a pass offense type of team. Um, but still, you don't want to see that happen. You want to be more efficient. Get your offense back on the field, and they will definitely make some plays for you. Yeah, and the matchup I'm looking at is Fox Lane offensive line. I mentioned some of them before versus this Yorktown defensive front seven. We know Fox Lane's uh, number one priority is running the football, and this Yorktown defensive front seven, not a very big front. Um, can they be physical enough and stop the run game is going to be a big one. Um, let's go to the next matchup, Mars. And that is Clarkstown North 1-0 at Pelham, who's also 1-0. Clarkson North won at Valley Central. Pelham won versus Portchester. And when we look at these two teams, they've only played each other twice since 2004. Clarkson North is 1-1. One one. Uh, they split the series versus Pelham. But last year, Pelham won 21-14 in a very close physical football game. Um, and if I'm a betting man, I'm going to bet that it's going to be a similar game this time. Uh, two physical football teams going at it. But let's start with Clarkson North. They did struggle on the road last year. They were 2-4. and four on the road last season they do start the season one and zero on the road offensively this is a physical offense again downhill running offense they are you know looking to open it up more um saw some good things last week they're running back cloud and he had 75 yards rushing two touchdowns lopez had 60 yards rushing and a touchdown um uh, chrissy had 30 yards rushing and i hope i said his name right uh malaysia had 94 yards rushing so you can see again they're getting close to almost 300 yards rushing between those guys, um, which is really strong. And, and that's going to be a big priority. Again, running the football is going to be huge. But 
I go back to their quarterback, Moesia, and he wasn't just running the ball for touchdown. He also 9 of 11 passing marks for 70 yards. And that might not seem like huge numbers, but it's efficiency, right? Efficiency, which is what I really like. He was efficient with the football. He was decisive with the football. And he's going to have to do that, you know, all season long for this offense to be more balanced, which I like what I saw. And again, this offensive line is going up against guys like Green. So they're going to need to continue to be uh, physical. Right, it's, it's they're gonna have to be very physical, but that efficiency in the passing game again, you don't have to throw for 300 yards, but nine of 11, right? Keeping the ball off the ground is gonna be a big thing. I think they're gonna have to continue that defensively. Again, they gotta get pressure on Reed. Um, this defensive front is led by Bordas, who had three sacks last week. Uh, Shields had a sack and five tackles. Uh, Pol- uh, uh he had six tackles and a sack and a fumble recovery. You can see again at six sacks, you know, that's the kind of pressure they're gonna have to bring. They may not hit all those sacks, but you know, constant pressure on Reed, keeping him in the pocket is gonna be huge. And again, you're going up against a team that also likes to run downhill in a physical style. Um, you know, Loudon's a guy who also had a sack last week, but you know, he was a strong uh player at the linebacker spot. He made a bunch of tackles for them, he's one of their leading tacklers. And these linebackers really gonna have to go against, you know, Pelham does like to run on a lot of counters. So you're going to have to read these linemen pulling. You're going to have to attack up field. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Clarkstown North? Yeah, when I look at Clarkstown North, and I do agree with you, they're a very physical offense. They run downhill. They're going to cause you know a lot of strain against a defensive front um, from Pelham. But obviously, it's going to be an interesting game to see kind of whether or not, you know which front is going to be the one that's more victorious here. Um, but I got to give a lot of props to quarterback Malizia. I think he does a great job. I probably butchered his name, but I do have to give him a lot of credit. Uh, he had a big game last week, and you mentioned he was efficient. I think he was able to run. He was able to do some passes, and he could do it all. He's an athlete, and he's going to be a, a, a really big-time cog in this offense. Even though they're a run-downhill type of offense, he could do it all. right? And I think that's going to be interesting to see. And obviously, defensively, you have to really try to continue this pressure that you're bringing from, uh, against opposing offenses. I think... Yeah, like you said, the, they, they were almost like the sack exchange. I mean, they were doing very well getting to the quarterback and causing some mayhem in the backfield and really just try to keep everything in, on the inside. So if they could do that, it's going to prove a, a pretty solid uh, a pretty solid time for their offense and keep getting on the field. Yeah. Let's move to Pelham Mars. Pelham 5-0 and at home let, uh, last season. They're 1-0 and this year. Um, offensively, again, another physical rush attack. They like to be in the gun. They like to run a lot of counters pulling offensive linemen and really attacking the seat gaps is a big, you know, uh, a big part of their offense that I like when, when they do that. And, you know, running back Teddy Johnson, he had a rushing touchdown, receiving touchdown, versatile skill guy for them that can move around. Um, and Timmy Myers, he had a really strong game last week, 134 yards rushing and a rushing touchdown. But to me, their biggest playmaker on offense is their quarterback. I mean, three total touchdowns last week, very quick guy, not a very tall guy but a guy who likes to break the pocket. And when he gets in space, he is very, very dangerous. So if they can try to get some design rollouts, if they can try to create some lanes for him that he can take off and run, um, he is a pain in the butt to stop. And I do think he can have a big game if he has some space. Defensively, Mars, um, they were really disruptive last week and were physical. Uh, They were physically imposing. Um, And it all starts with that defensive line and that bad man that's Luke Green. He had six tackles, three tackles for loss. Can they get Clarkstown North in second and third and long? So they can kind of pin their ears back and, and come with their rush, right? Uh, Jack Boyce, he had an INT last week. They need to keep North um, off the edge where they can be very dangerous, right? If you can keep them bottled up inside, I do think they're big and physical enough uh, to hold up well in between the tackles. Um, but that's going to be the big question, right? Keeping their quarterback also inside the pocket keeping these these halfbacks who could be pretty dangerous out on the edge, keep them, keep the contain strong. Um, Mars, what are your thoughts on Pelham? Yeah, I think Pelham has a very efficient offense. You got guys like Teddy Johnson who are really just versatile, can do a lot of things for you. Um, and But I think the biggest thing that, obviously, you already mentioned this before, but Pelham needs to get into the open space. Create some lanes for those top playmakers, and they will burn you, right? They will hurt you if you do that. So obviously, the offensive line is going to have to have a big game this week. From a defensive point of view, they are imposing. Their front four needs to continue to cause some mayhem, cause a lot of issues. And if they can control that, that the, the trenches itself, then it's going to be a really difficult time for Clarkstown North to really move the ball. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, my matchup to watch, Mars, I'm looking at this Pelham Rush tag versus Clarkstown North's run defense. Um, I thought Clarkstown North was very physical defensively last week. They're going to have to be like that again this week. And this Pelham Rush attack, I do think they're going to go up against a step up in the defensive front. Um, so we're going to see which group kind of wins out on that. That's going to be huge. Um, let's go to the next game, Mars. Another really intriguing game for me, Rye, 1-0 at Brewster, who is 0-0. This is a lead game. Rye last week won at Cornwall, um, which was a bit of a surprise for a lot of folks around here. Um, Brewster did not play a week zero game. Um, Brewster is 1-0 versus Rye, but the last time they played was in 2016. So it's been six years uh, since they've seen each other. Uh, but let's start with Rye. Rye was 4-0 on the road last year, 1-0 last week. Um, this is a young, inexperienced team. But boy, did they play big in a big moment on the road. Um, which is why it surprised a lot of people. But I'm going to start on offense. We can't go anywhere first without talking about their quarterback, A.J. Miller, the junior. 16 of 27 passing marks, 361 yards, and four touchdowns. Um, and we saw this young man uh, during the summer, and he has a live arm. And we can see that he can attack multiple levels uh, of the field. And you saw it on display last week, and I'm expecting to see it again. I mean, um, if this offensive line can hold up in pass protection, which I did think they did a solid job of last week, there were some uh, mishaps. But if they can hold up against a pretty decent front in Brewster as well, I do think that they can hit some big plays in the passing game. And throwing it to guys like she uh, Shepard Griffiths, uh, he had six catches, 120 yards, and two touchdowns. He also had a pass for 44 yards. Referring to McSweeney, he had 129 yards receiving and a touchdown. They have some weapons out on the outside, and those were just two of them. There are other ones that have contributed in the passing game. Um, and what a bit surprised me, Mars, we always talk about, you know, who's going to be that running back that steps up for them. Tommy Richardson, he had 149 yards rushing, two touchdowns. If they can get that kind of balance between, I do think that they're becoming more of a throwing team. Running is important, but, um, you know, with A.J. Miller, you want to try to sling the rock around. If they can get a compliment and run the football, and Richardson was a good example last week, this offense really could be dangerous. And they had six or seven players who caught footballs last week, Mars. I mean, if they can have some balance, this could be a really deadly offense. Um, defensively, Brewster, they're going to have a strong emphasis um, running the football. So, again, can they be more physical against kind of a downhill running style offense and handle Brewster's physicality? I mean, if I look at this defensive front, guys like Swarak, Welburn, Gonzalez, uh, Guazzo, they were all leading tackles for them, tacklers for them last week. Um, they're going to have to step up. And, uh, you know, Cornwall likes to sling the ball around as well. Brewster is probably going to be more of a heavy run with their running back and their quarterback. So it's going to be interesting to see can they contain the physicality of Brewster. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Rye? Yeah, Rye looked, offensively looked like insane. I mean, the fact is, they looked extremely efficient. AJ Miller, a young quarterback, was dominant. I mean, he was carving like he was just carving everyone up, right? And I think the offensive line, if they can hold up the pocket, like you mentioned, then the then just the offense will be super efficient. I mean, the run offense was doing very well. It opened up the pass some more, and then when you once you once you got AJ Miller the ball, I mean, he was just dominant. Like I I was really impressed the way this Rye offense had looked. Defensively, like you said, you know, Brewster's going to be trying to, you know, hit you with some power running schemes. So it's really going to be up to the front seven to really slow that down and really contain what Brewster has because they do have a lot of skill players that can cause some issues. Yeah. And moving to Brewster, Mars again, I I'm expecting to see a heavy dose of quarterback uh, Perello and then Fuso, their running back. Um, I do think you're going to see kind of a two man. Uh, with some play action, obviously, with other people, but I do think the emphasis of the offense will be on those two guys. And they want to try to control the pace, Mars, and keep Rise offense on the sideline, which would be a huge benefit for their defense. Um, but I do think, you know, we know Rye likes to play an aggressive side of defense. They like to stun, at least last year they did. Um, they have to be able to handle these blitzes, right? If they cannot, and they get into negative plays, um, which will occur, but if they can hold up on these blitzes, Mars, they will get some man coverage. Right, if they can kind of get through that initial surge, um, there'll also be some running lanes. Right, so it's going to be huge for them to know where the blitzes are coming, um, know how to block them and cover them off, um, which will be huge if they can take advantage. And again, a guy like Sanchez out on the outside um, is a receiver that could beat some man coverage. Right, so it's going to be huge for him. 
Uh, again, if they can do some play action, get ahead of the chains, uh, they might be able to hit some big plays. The defensively, Mars, you're going up against a high-powered offense. Preventing the big plays is going to be huge. Ryder really capitalized on big chunk plays last week. If Brewster has a chance, wants to have a chance in this game, they cannot give up these huge chunk plays. And, and pressuring the quarterback is going to be huge, right? A defensive lineman like Derek Carlson and the rest of these defensive line really going to have to get after the quarterback. But again, I'm looking at these defensive backs, Sanchez, Perrello, Rienzi. Can they match up against some of these stud receivers, these young receivers too, um, that have stepped up for Rye last week? I think an interesting matchup is going on between those guys. They can hold up. Um, I do think that things could go into Brewster's favor. This is a very interesting matchup for me, Mars. What are your thoughts on Brewster? Yeah, I think uh, when you look at Brewster, they have a very good combo by both quarterback and a running back. And I think the biggest goal that Brewster has here is to really slow down the pace, right? Like you said before, try to keep Rye's offense off the field because Rye just seems like to be a very offensive juggernaut, right? After last week's uh, game, the uh, week zero game. So it's going to be in Brewster's best interest to try to slow down the pace offensively and defensively. And, you know, I think in my opinion, send the heat, right? AJ Miller is going to be a young quarterback. He, need, he, you know, if he starts to feel the pressure, you hopefully can get some sort of a turnover, to get your guys back on the field. So it's going to be interesting to see how Brewster tries to slow down this high powered offense. Uh, my matchup to watch, and I kind of said it earlier, this Rye wide receivers versus Brewster DBs. And if Mars talks about bringing pressure, you got to be able to play some man coverage for bringing pressure. Um, if you can't match up with them one on one at times, it's not going to be all game, but at times, um, it's going to be a long day for you. All right, Mars, let's go to our next matchup, and it is John J. Cross River 0-1 at Somers, who is 0-0 league game. Uh, last week, John J. Cross River lost kind of a heartbreaker to Yorktown in overtime. And historically, John J. Cross River actually has a winning record versus Somers. Uh, they're 6-5, and five, but Somers has won two straight versus them. And last year, Mars, they beat Somers beat John J. Cross River 49 to nothing, And it was their most lopsided victory in this rivalry uh, for either team. Um, so John J. Cross River probably is looking for revenge and Somers is coming back as a highly favored team in A. Um, but let's start with John J. Cross River. Uh, they had over 400 yards of offense last week, um, but they also gave up some big chunk plays, right? So, you know, how do they recover from this tough loss in overtime offensively? It's going to be really tough to run the ball consistently versus this Somers front, similar to last year, especially in between the tackles. Now, last week, uh, last year, excuse me, they were absolutely dominated in the trenches by Somers, right? Um, they couldn't move the ball anywhere because they really couldn't block the guys up front. The question is, you know, what happens this time around, right? If they're going to have some semblance of a rush attack, this offensive line is going to have to step up and create some lanes. It's not going to be consistent, not going to get four yards to carry, I don't believe. Um, but they have to get some semblance. They can't be in second and 10. Can't be in third and nine. They can't be in second and 15. That's a disaster waiting to happen for this team. Um, but what they can do, besides kind of attacking the edge of Somers, um, running the football, I do think they can use the quick passing game kind of as an addition to the run. Uh, similar to last year, but they got to protect the quarterback, right? So it's going to be run, uh, the ability to run, uh, block, and pass block is going to be huge. And if uh, they want a chance, they're going to have to do it this week. But let's start with their quarterback, Galea. I mean, what is it, 21 of 35, Marcy, had over 350 yards passing, four touchdowns. Um, tremendous performance from him last week. But this is what also hurt this offense, two interceptions, right? And those two interceptions were sort of big ones, Um and that's always kind of been things. Just again, when you throw a lot, you're usually going to have a ball or two that goes into the other team's hands. Um, but to limit the turnovers as best you can is going to be huge in this game. Um, another guy who, again, well rounded, versatile player is Shapiro. 78 yards rushing. RC also had 74 yards receiving, two touchdowns. He had that long receiving touchdown. This is what I talk about that quick game. Because Shapiro's a guy, he's not just in the backfield, he has experience at wide receiver. You can kind of throw him the ball. Um, out of the backfield and kind of, again, as an extension of that running game, which is going to be really important. Their wide receiver, Zach Anino, he is a man-beater, 10 catches, 139 yards, and a touchdown. Now, this was an interesting one to me, Mars. Um, DTR did not play last week. Uh, I didn't see him play last week. I don't know what the status is on there. Obviously, him playing is a big boost for, their, for the offense, and him not playing is a loss, right? So 
Don't know his status. Obviously, if he's not playing, it's a big loss. If he is playing, it'll definitely be a help. But I think the biggest thing is his offensive line and turnovers is going to be the big factor. Um, defensively, I thought there were some bright moments last week. Again, it wasn't all bad. But getting off the field on third down and winning in the red zone is going to be big. I thought there were times that the game was right there for them to win. and just couldn't execute um, down the stretch on third down and in the red zone. And, you know, again, you're up against a strong front in summer than a veteran quarterback. You've got to be able to execute in big moments, especially on third down. It's going to be key. Um, can they get pressure on their, on Somers' quarterback? Can they kind of get him off his platform? Is going to be huge. And, again, protecting the edge from guys like Robbie Doss Jr. and Savino is going to be really important. Mars, what are your thoughts on John Jay? Yeah, John Jay's offense was pretty crazy last week. I mean, obviously around 400 yards <laughs> Of just total offense is pretty crazy, but well, yeah, well, almost 500. Almost, yeah, almost closer to 500. But essentially, when I'm looking at this, I think it's going to be a uh, really tough sledding for the offensive line. And you know, you mentioned this before, but the offensive line needs to be the most important group on this team uh, this coming week because they're going to be ones that set the stage of what happens. I think if they actually have the ability to, to stand up to this Somers front. It gives it gives John Jay Cross River a lot of leeway of what they could possibly do on the run and even on the pass. Um, because at the end of the day, I, I think that they have the ability to match up athletically, but I think size I think is going to be a difficult thing. Right? I, just because Somers has just such a massive line, um, defensive line and offensive line. Um, but I do agree with you. DCR I think is going to be the the fact that he didn't play is kind of concerning. I think he is, you know, in my opinion, one of the most you know powerful uh, just explosive players in 1a and we always touted him especially in the team previews and we said hey if he's playing uh, he can make a lot of big plays so i'm wondering what would happen this week if he's going to be playing or not um but that will definitely play a factor defensively you got to be more efficient red zone defense has got to be a lot more efficient than it was last week in the week zero game i think somers is going to try to run it right down your throat so essentially you got to try to slow it down especially when you get to the red zone i think that's going to be the big thing if you can slow it down the red zone Try to cause a turnover. You'll get your offense back on the field and hopefully get some points. Uh, let's move to Somers. Somers 10-0 and at home the last two seasons. Mark, very tough home team. Um, and offensively, let's start with their quarterback, Matt Fitzsimons. I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the section. Um, someone who can kind of attack each level of your defense. Really strong off of play action as well. But I'm actually interested to see this wide receiver group gel with him and come together, right? They lost some wide receivers, important wide receivers. For them, um, I do think again, like you said, I do think you'll see some run, especially downhill running with Savino and Robbie Doss, um, kind of relying on the strength of their offensive line, which again, not our giant hulking guys outside Polito, but strong, right? Strong guys who can move bodies, and I think they're going to try to take advantage of their strength, um, and that's the key X factor, right? Polito, Creco, and the rest of them can they dominate up front, which against the John Jay Cross River defensive front, that's not very big. Right? And you know this defensive front of Cross River is probably going to have to be very aggressive. So how are they going to handle potential stunts, hot reads, and stuff like that is going to be important. I do think if they protect Fitzsimons, I do think that they can hit some huge plays um, in the passing game. Defensively, Mars, again, you're going up against a heavy spread and a lot of pass looks. Um, expect to see some stunts from Somers. They like to be aggressive at times, and you'll see some man coverage, but also try to bracket some guys at times. I don't think they can go just pure man versus Aquino, who really is a man beater, especially if DTR is back. Now you have multiple weapons that are tough to play man to man against. Um, but if this D line can be as disruptive as last season, um, then they can play whatever coverage they want, right? And the guy to keep an eye on is Ryan Cole. I do think he had a really strong scrimmage. He is one of those edge rushers that could, you know, be that next really strong defensive lineman for Somers. Um, and he can find his way into the backfield. He has a, a strong guy um, who can does a pretty good job of using his hand. So this is something I'm going to keep an eye on. Mario, what are your thoughts on Somers? Yeah, I mean, Somers obviously is the favorite, right? And when you look at Somers, Mathis Simons is, uh, you know, obviously a tremendous talent. He can carve you up. He's super effect, uh, efficient. Um, and it obviously goes alongside the Somers offensive line. Now, granted, they aren't the same size as the guys last year. But like you said, the strength is still there and the grittiness is still there. So the question is going to be, in my port, my my X factor is going to be this offensive line. Right? I think that they're they're essentially going to be the ones that kind of dictate how this game goes. If Somers' offensive line is meeting the standards of the of the years of old, then this this offense can do a lot of damage, right? And I think defensively it's going to be the same thing. 
this front is going to is going to show you what type of Stormers team this is, right? Now, granted, I think it's it's going to be interesting to see it, obviously losing some guys and obviously, you know, not being the same size, but it's really going to be about just efficiency and technique. Can these Stormers guys up front defensively and offensively just be consistent, right? Just go after on defense, go after, uh, you know, try to contain these skilled players from John Jay. And I think if you get your offense back on the field, Matt Fitzsimons can make some big plays for you. Uh, my matchup uh, in this game, Mars, and again, I don't love doing player-to-player -player matchups, but this is one I'm keeping my eye on. Shapiro, the running back for John Jay Cross River, very versatile guy. I do think he's probably one of their most important football players. Versus Luke Kennedy, the linebacker of Somers, and the rest of this linebacker and crew who can run. Right, So they're going to have to cover him out of the backfield. They're going to have to bang around with him in between the tackles. Um, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Um, let's go to our final matchup, our game of the week. And that is Harrison 1-0 at Clarkstown South, who is 0-0. Um, last week, Harrison won versus Cardinal Spellman in a non-league game. Clarkstown South did not play a game in week 0. Clarkstown South is 1-0 versus Har uh, Harrison. They played in 2019, where they won 30-9. These two teams don't play each other a lot. Um, so this is a very intriguing matchup to me, Mars. Harrison last year, 4-1 on the road. Really strong on the road, and I thought they were well-rounded last week on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. Let's start offensively again. I mentioned that they were well-balanced last week. There's obviously an emphasis on the run game, running the option, but they run the option with tempo, right? So they like to change tempos. They like to speed things up. Um, they can slow things down as well. And I do think, again, South is going to, you know, South is going to have some size up front, but Harrison has some size up front. And their offensive line and guys like Rennell and Haynes, and they're going to have to be physical with them. And Harrison will hit you with, you know, a few backs, Koopy, uh, Barcella, Marisi, some of the guys that I saw last week uh, running the ball. And they can spread it around, which I do think keeps a, a defense off balance. And then they can hit their big play guys, their wide receivers like McLaughlin, um, who had obviously a touchdown reception last week. Um, but again, the tempo and controlling the ball, keeping South on the offense on the sideline is going to be big because I do think South can be very explosive. Um, is going to be huge. And then finally relying on their quarterback, Citro. I thought the junior, he was efficient last week. Efficiency is the big thing. When you run these options, you need to have a quarterback, and I mentioned this in previous videos, has to make quick decisions, correct decisions, and protect the football. And, you know, him doing some play action, him being smart with the football is going to be the most important thing to me um, besides making razzle-dazzle plays, right? So I think that's going to be huge for this for this offense. Um, defensively, I do think they can hold up relatively well in the tackle box uh, against the run. But the question that I'm interested in seeing is how they're going to play coverage versus some of these South receivers. Like they're going to face tempo versus South. Um, can they match up with the DBs and with the speed and size on the outside? Um, it is going to be really intriguing to me. And, you know, they're going to have to win some early downs, right? Because when Clark Sound South is kind of like a fast break, you know, when they get some tempo and some rhythm, that's when it's really hard to stop them. And this is another offense last season, hit a lot of big chunk plays. Right, so avoiding those big chunk plays are going to be huge, Mars. Um, what are your thoughts on Harrison? Yeah, Harrison, I think offensively it needs to be efficient, and I think they have the ability to do so. The the, the option, the way that they run it in, in an up tempo style, is very uh, interesting, especially since you know they can kind of kind of just control the entirety of the game if they if they want to. I think they also can catch people off guard when increasing the tempo uh, the way they do. But in my opinion, the offensive line is going to have to play big. They're going to have to play big time. They need to open up lanes for this offense, and they just need to just kind of keep, keep the trenches in, in line and obviously get positive plays every single down. Yeah. Uh, let's move to Clarkstown South, Mars. And offensively, this group could be very explosive and balanced. I think it could be one of the top offenses in the class. They're bringing back some veteran offensive linemen who are going to be huge for them, guys like Ram, uh, Ryan, Somerlad, uh, Lewis. Um, you know, they add, add some bulk to you, and they add some strength to this offensive line. And they could be really strong up front. And, you know, how are they going to handle some of the quicker defensive linemen is going to be intriguing to me of Harrison. But if, if pass pro can hold up, Mars, quarterback holder, we know he had a big season last year, finding wide receivers like Ali and Fatera, um, you know, they could hit some big chunk plays. We saw it last season when things held up. Um, they, you know, throwing the football wasn't too difficult for them with these targets. But another interesting guy to me is their running back, Jake Kerr. Right? He was a quarterback last year. He's running back this year. 
Um, I want to see this running game, how that develops, right? That's going to be intriguing. If they can be more balanced, right? Don't just air it out all the time. Um, I do think they could be a lot of, you know, they can cause a lot of trouble for defenses um, with this balanced attack defensively. Listen, when you're playing option football, what is the key word that we hear, Mars? There's multiple things that we talk about, but responsibility football is the, is the key word to me when I see a team playing an option football team. You got to know who you're responsible for. And again, I think another big thing is winning those early downs. And so I'm looking at kind of guys like linebacker Butler um, are going to have to step up. They're going to have to make some plays. They're going to have to win those early downs, get them into second and third and long, which is not what Harrison is normally comfortable with. Um, but it's going to be really important, and they have to stay with their keys, right? Because, you know, it looks like the same play over and over again, but here comes a counter, right? Or here comes the ball's going to somebody else. And they, you know, that's they try to lull you to sleep, and that's when the big play is going to happen, including off of play action. Uh, Mars, what are your thoughts on Clarkstown South? The Clarkstown South has a very efficient offense. If they continue doing that uh, at, you know, at, as, as this season goes on, I think it's going to be a really good showing by them. I think the biggest thing I see is that you got guys like Holder who can have a really big time game, um, but it's going to be dependent on this offensive line and how they do, right? I think that's going to be really important to see, you know, who controls the trenches here. When it comes to defense, obviously you're you're playing against, you know, a option offense, so you have to create some negative plays, force them into third and longs, and then you can try to uh, force a mistake, force a turnover, and all of a sudden. You know, you're getting this offense back on the field and causing some issues. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Mars, let's go to the keys to the game. And again, you can comment on any of the keys that I present. This is kind of the keys for both teams um, and what I'm looking at could dictate this football game. And the first one I'm going to look at is Clarkstown South handling the option. And when we talk of, you know, we mentioned about handling option football, knowing your responsibilities, winning early down. But when you don't play an option team every year and, you know, don't see it a lot, um, it's very different when you see it live for like the first time or second time. So um, that's the bad news. But the good news is they play in week week one, right? So you, you've gotten to work on it for probably a lot of the summer, um, knowing about option football. But it is different live. But at least, again, how they handle the option is going to be huge because I do think Harrison has the opportunity to control the tempo of this football game. Um, my second one more, special teams. And we keep talking about offense, defense. Special teams is going to be huge in this one. They have two of the best kickers in this game, um, one in Reed for Harrison, one in Levins for Clarkstown South, and also returners. McLaughlin, one of the best returners in Harrison, um, Fetera for Clarkstown South. A couple big plays in coverage-wise um, and returning the football could really change this game. Special teams, to me, is another key factor, Mars. Uh, any comments on those? Yes, yeah, just about being, dis uh, being very disciplined against an optional offense, and that's something that we always preach as coaches, but it's 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 just true. Like if you're playing discipline, then an optional offense is not as difficult to stop. But obviously, it's going to be a big question to see on week one. Now, granted, they've been practicing probably all you know all summer for it, but week one is usually where teams are the most undisciplined. So it's going to be a good showing to see if they are or not. Yeah, uh, one of the matchups, obviously, Chris Ali is is. A tremendous football player but my matchup it's actually on the other side i'm, I'm hoping we get this matchup uh Fetera, the wide receiver parts on south versus mclaughlin the defensive back of harrison two of the fastest kids in the class um which is going to be really interesting to me um but my player to watch and i mentioned the wide receiver outside linebacker chris ali clarkstown south one of the best players in the section a strong two-way player big physical wide receiver straight line can run by you and defensively you can also make some plays this is a high impact player he's gonna have to be big for Clarkson himself all right Mars are you ready to pick the games my man I'm ready to roll dude all right we want to try to get over 65 percent or I'm sorry 65 was last year this year we want to hit 70 percent plus in our game picks at the end um, we'll obviously compare our picks to each other and uh, we'll do some friendly thing maybe with Loa where they're at um but you know fan sports knows <laughs> well let's get into our game picks mars and just before we get started guys we don't always get you know injury updates and stuff like that so this is just based on the knowledge that we know at this time and for a lot of reasons why we don't get injury updates is for competitive reasons and for privacy reasons but let's do the best we can mars let's dive into the first game i want to talk about morrison beard of new jersey want to know at sleepy hollow who's also want to know this is a non-league game um, not a lot of information on Morristown, obviously, is out of the section. 
But I will say this. I was really impressed with Sleepy Hollow's quarterback, Tyler Mahood. I thought, again, very well last year. I was impressed with him this past week, two touchdowns. Uh, last week, Dylan Gonzalez had a receiving touchdown. Uh, Wyvon Mariah had two rushing touchdowns. And, uh, you know, the defense pitched a shutout. Really strong all-around performance from Sleepy Hollow. But Morristown has this dual running back threat. Um, one of them, Marcelo, uh, I believe it's Marcelo uh, Lareca. Strong running back, junior. I watched some of his tape from last week. Um, this is a downhill runner. He's hard to tackle. He's about 190 pounds. I'm actually going to go with Morristown. I do think they're going to see a step up Sleepy Hollow in downhill running. I thought the offensive line of Morristown uh, showed to be pretty strong. I didn't think this game could be close, but I'm going to go with Morristown at the end. Um, I feel like I'm going to go with Sleepy Hollow. I think Sleepy Hollow um, defensively last week showed some really good things. I think offensively they're just going to keep continually get better. Um, hopefully this, it, it's. I mean, I think it's going to be a close game overall. I think just Sleepy Hollow is going to win in a very close fashion. I'm going to go Sleepy Hollow. Let's go to the next game. Lakeland 1-0 and at Nyack, who is 0-0. This is a league game. When I look at this game, Mars, Nyack is a big X-Factor team to me. Um, we start on the offensive side of the ball. That quarterback, Michael Fowler, veteran, multi-year starter. I want to see his growth from last year to this year. And behind an offensive line, that is replacing a lot of faces. So we're going to see this offensive line. Can they gel together? But a breakout player for them could be their running back, uh, Klebensky, Gene uh, Baptiste, the sophomore. Defensively, how do they match up to the wide receivers of Lakeland? Lakeland, the quarterback spot we know, Grady Leonard. 11 to 13 passing for 90 yards and a touchdown. Probably want to be a little bit, again, careful with the turnovers, even though his completion percentage was very high. Um, but, you know, they have multiple weapons at the wide receiver spot that we talked about a bunch of times. The question is, can they run the ball against the bigger front? Scaglione had 76 yards rushing last week. I thought the defense was really strong. Like they forced three turnovers, had a defensive touchdown, obviously led by uh, their linebacker, Carroll, who had 12 ta uh, tackles, Nugent, who had eight tackles, Whisker had 11 tackles, Mandel, two sacks. If Blakeland can play defense like they did last week, they're going to be a tough out. And then you want to see if this offense becomes more efficient. I'm not going to go with Lakeland. Um, I do think Lakeland offense becomes a little bit more efficient this week. Um, Nyack, again, big X factor team, but I'm going Lakeland. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I think Lakeland, if there's a feat, if their defense can, you know, be consistent and offensively just get better, I think they'll have a better, uh, a, just a better outing. And I think Lakeland will have the advantage. I'm going to go Lakeland here. Uh, next game, Maypac 1 0 at Eastchester is also 1 0. Maypac's Joey Kochmars. We obviously know. 150, uh, really solid football player. 154 yards rushing, three touchdowns. Those had a kick return touchdown. I got some news for coaches out there. Um, if Koch is back there, well, for Maypac, they probably want you to kick to him. But if you're playing against him, you probably should not kick to him. Um, he's so he's extremely fast, um, and he took the open kickoff last week for a touchdown. But there's no question, it's got to feed that man, right? Feed the beast, give Koch the ball. They're probably going to have a big size advantage up front versus East Chester. And then probably hit a couple, uh, a big play or two off a play action to a guy like Danny Koch. Defensively, Mars, I thought they were um, a very bend but don't break defense. They got, you know, the other motion got to the red zone a few times but couldn't capitalize. And they forced turnovers and they stopped them in the red zone, which is going to be huge. When I look at East Chester, Mars, offensively, um, it's going to be tough to run inside versus Maypack, but I do think they can try to attack the edge. And, you know, guys like Sparandino had 119 yards rushing and kind of their multi athlete weapons in. Uh, Provenzale, who can line up the quarterback, wide receiver, Dia versus Herbert. They had three touchdowns combined. You know, offensively, I think they have the skill guys, but the question to me is defensively, can they stop the run? I don't think it's going to happen. I think Maypac should win this game. I think they're a much bigger team than, than East Chester, but I think it'll be closer than what people think, but I'm going to go Maypac. Yeah, I'm going to go with Maypac as well. I think that they, I agree with you, they should win this game. They have the star, the star power with, with Koch. I think they have some big guys up front. I think Porco is going to be a, a force to be reckoned with this yeah. season. Um, and I think that you have, you know, Eastchester is, you know, is a solid team. I think it's going to be very close. I just think that they kind of need to try to win the trenches. And it's going to be tough because maybe it just has a size advantage, in my opinion. But it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I wouldn't, uh, if let's just say Eastchester were to win, I wouldn't be surprised because Eastchester is yeah. closer than what people say. Um, but I think Maypac has just more star power. I'm going to go with Maypac here. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It wouldn't surprise me. But if Eastchester did win, I do think it'd be an upset. Mm -hmm. um, 
Firstborn. Let's go to the next game. Mars Fox Lane 0 1 at Yorktown, who is 1 0. We broke this game down before. Listen, Fox Lane is a gritty football team. I, I, they're a well coached football team, tough. Um, they're going to try to run the ball downhill. I do think they'll have some success defensively. I don't think uh, Yorktown's going to get as many big plays as they did last week. Um, but I was impressed with Yorktown. I think Myrell's moving around. Um, really causes a lot of trouble for defense. And if Gonzalez, who comes in, can show poise, continue to show poise and be efficient, Yorktown has something, right? Yorktown has something. They do need to sure up things defensively. This is not an easy one, but I do think Yorktown's going to win this one. At home, the fans, the crop is going to be going crazy. Do you think they have an advantage there? I'm going Yorktown. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I think Yorktown uh, really showed that they can score uh, on Will a lot of times. And they... No, it, was a t- it was a tough game last week for John J. Cross River, but Yorktown, they made it work, you know, and at, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I think Yorktown has the ability to make big plays, and they definitely need to step it up this week, because Fox Lane is a gritty team, right? So I think Yorktown, in my opinion, is going to step it up. They're going to win the game on Yorktown. Right, 1-0 oh at Brewster, who's 0-0, another league game right here. Mars, this is, I think, game could be a little bit closer than what people think. Brewster is, again, a physical football team. They have some guys like Barello and Fuso um, that I like. I think they're talented football players. They have some physicality up front. Not a very big front, but some physicality to them. And I'm always nervous about a young football team. They come off a huge victory. How do they respond the following week? Sometimes they can be a little bit flat um, coming back and going again on the road. But I am going to go with a ride. I was really impressed by some of these young guys stepping up. Um, I do think, again, this is going to be a closer game than people think. On the road in Brewster will be hard, but I am going to go with Rye here. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I think Rye is going to win this game. I think A.J. Miller is going to step out again and have another solid game. I think he's kind of showing that he has a lot of ability and people should be looking out for him. Um, I'm going to go with Rye here. Clarkstown North 1-0 at Pelham, who is 1-0. Mars, I'm gonna let you go first on this one. Who wins this game? Uh, this is actually a really tough game. I feel like when I was looking at the matchups here, you know, I, I really want to see which team has the advantage, especially when it comes to the the front itself. Um, I, I honestly feel that I'm leaning towards Clarkstown North, but ultimately I'm picking Pelham. I think Pelham mm. is gonna have this win the because road, because they have the home field advantage, and I think that that's going to give them just the extra edge to really step it up here. I'm going Pelham. I think this is one of the hardest games to take out of all the classes uh, this week, and it says a lot for both these teams. Very physical, similar identities in, in to, my, to me, at least, um, with both physicality on both sides of the ball. Pelham is 6-0 and at home the last, you know, last year, including this season. 6-0 and at home, really tough home team. But I think Clarkstown North gets revenge on us. I think Clarkstown North is going to revenge last year's loss in a tough physical game. Another very close game this week. I think Clarkstown North makes enough plays on the offensive side of the ball in a low-scoring game to win it. I'm going Clarkstown North. John Jay Cross River 0-1 at Somers 0-0. Mars Somers is a heavy favorite. Does John Jay Cross River get revenge for the last year? Um, I don't think so. I think Somers is the favor for a reason. They have obviously a lot of a lot of players. I mean, Mathis Simons is the is the dude. Right? I mean, he's kind of. And I said this, but in the team preview show, um, I'm surprised that he didn't earn. I mean, he definitely earned it, but I'm surprised he was awarded the Offensive Player of the Year award, um, just because you know he really was dominant. Right? He straight up dominated uh, in that in that category. So I think that he's going to just continue to grow. He's an, in the he's just he's just a force. So I think he's gonna kind of take over, take control, and this offensive line is just gonna move body. Right. I'm gonna go somewhere. I think John J. Cross River has some skill players, has a lot of you know power here. They have a lot of ability, but the un the unsure uh start of Dishiara does get me a little weary here. And I think that if he does start, it could could give them more a closer game, but I think Somers just has too much. Um, again, when we look at last week, last week week zero is not a league game, right? So this is the first league game um, for both these teams. Somers did not play; they had a scrimmage last week, and John Jay Cross River, although lost, it's not a league game. So the winner or loser of this one is not like 
when you lose, it's not the end of the world, right? It's a tough way to, to start. I am going to go with Somers as well. I do think even John Jay Cross River falling to 0 2, I still think they have a long, long season ahead of them. Um, they've had two tough opponents to start the year. I do not think it's going to be 49 0. I don't think it's going to be that. I think the game will definitely be closer. I do, could see John Jay Cross River kind of catch Somers a little bit by surprise um, in this game um, because I do think they'll probably be overlooked a little bit. But I do think Somers pulls away and I do think they win. Uh, somewhat handily in this one. I'm going to go with Solmers. All right, Marshall, last one, game of the week. Harrison 1-0 at Carstown South, 0-0. Zero and zero. Very interesting game. And, uh, you know, I look at this, these two teams. I, Harrison was a surprise team that I picked before the year. Um, Clarkstown South is a veteran team, uh, bringing a lot of weapons back. This feels like a statement win. Again, win or loser doesn't dictate the entire season, but this feels like a pretty good indicator uh, between these two teams, Lars. Uh, who do you have winning and why? Well, obviously, when you're looking at both these teams, I and I, I do agree with you. It, it was definitely a tough pick for me. Um, obviously, Harrison has you know a very efficient run game. I think they have the ability to uh, run the option, control the pace, and I think the fact that they can kind of jump start into a higher tempo if they want to does give them an advantage because they can kind of dictate how much they want to spend on the field and really drain these defenses. Clark Sound South obviously has a high-powered offense. I mean, they have a lot of returning offensive line. They have, obviously, a multiple skill players that can hurt you. Um, so when I'm looking at this, I'm going to go with Clark Sound South. I think Clark Sound South is going to be the top-level offensive uh, you know, web, uh, teams in this league, in this class, I mean, and I think that th it's going to show this week. I think that they are going to show that they're efficient. They can make a lot of plays, and the defense will show up to kind of get their offense back the ball because just the higher you know, points on the scoreboard. Here. Um, I think Harrison is going to surprise South. Um, I think they're going to catch them a little bit off guard. I do think that it's going to take some time to adjust to the option, but I am going to go with South as well. I do think South has a lot of veterans coming back. I do think this offense is going to be extremely explosive. I could see this being a very high scoring game uh, between these two teams. And it's going to come down to, again, turnovers, um, and who, again, who has the most possessions. And I do think South will end up doing that. And I do think South is going to end up winning. All right, everyone, that was our show. We want to thank you guys so much for joining us. Again, remember to give a thumbs up and subscribe for future content and to help boost the channel. But I hope you guys enjoy week one of the football season. We'll see you all very soon. Have a good night.